This line is for 2 o'clock only. You need a pass to get in to see the exhibition. The response to this exhibition here at WPA has been completely overwhelming. We really had no idea that so many people would come and we'd get so much support for the exhibition, you know, from the public at large. I think since we opened the show two weeks ago, uh, over now 27,000 people have come through the doors at WPA. I mean, we've never had such numbers. Uh, in any one day, maybe uh, as many as 2,000 come through and see the exhibition on weekends, sometimes more. And overwhelmingly, the response has been positive. Uh, I've talked to people with different ideas about it. Uh, I think a lot of people uh, think it's kind of tough. A few of the works in the show, and, and there are things that they're maybe not used to seeing or, or make them feel a little bit uneasy, but they're willing to, I think, look for themselves to try to understand different aspects of, of American life. I think many people are actually voting with their feet. They're saying, Jesse Helms, we can decide for ourselves. You don't have to tell us what we can see and what we can't see. Art is an important part of our culture and these exhibits that create a great deal of excitement are important and not all people are going to like it. Art is subjective to you know the person who views the art. People like Jesse Helms and other conservatives when they tell you not to look at something it immediately wants you, makes you want to look at it. He's conservative, he wants to control people. He wants to control what people think, he wants to uh, hide reality and, and I think that uh, I think he's way off base. If I really uh, can kind of understand what Jesse Helms is doing, I believe what he's trying to do is you know, address some concerns felt by his constituency. Uh, I think it's important for people you know, like myself and the other people who are here to uh, come out and show that they don't agree necessarily with his constituency. And it's, you know, it's the way de democracy works. Everybody has a right to express their opinions. Uh, Jesse Helms is trying to legislate his opinions, and I think that's wrong. It's the business of Congress to preserve freedom, not put limitations on freedom. Frankly, I think that it, lawmakers are looking for every opportunity to get in the headlines, and I think they're looking for every opportunity to, um, to make political hay out of something. And I think they ought not to. I think that they ought not to. Let's start with the fact that our show was all funded by private sources. The Corcoran show was all funded by private sources. And when Jesse Helms' staff was repeatedly calling the Corcoran, badgering and harassing and intimidating them to close that show, that was an act of outright and clear censorship. What Helm, the Helms Amendment, which tries to essentially vitiate and destroy the entire NEA program because it says that it, the NEA cannot fund any program that offends anybody. The American people are smarter than that. We've had thousands and thousands and thousands of people that have come through this show and made up their mind and they've looked at some very tough things, admittedly, some things that you might not have shown your grandmother. But in fact, if you trust the people, and you trust people to make up their own minds aesthetically, everything will come out all right. And the NEA has been great because it's been a great addition to our society because it has permitted a number of things to be presented that are not stock, are not Norman Rockwell, they're not Hallmark cards. They are experimental and they're challenging. And the American people are perfectly able to look at those things and to evaluate them for themselves. I believe that, that the real key to uh, this whole issue of artists' rights right now is the fact that Robert Maplethorpe's work was put up in Washington, uh, two miles from the, the uh, halls of Congress where the debate over artists' rights is going on. The uh, whole arts budget is a tiny percentage of the federal budget, and the amount of controversial artists that ever show up every uh, 20 years are also a tiny percentage, that um, you're, dis you're discussing something that is purely political motivation and has nothing to do with administering the country, which is really what they should be doing. Uh, first of all, I think to describe what art is or what it is not is extremely difficult to do. Uh, secondly, the amount of money I think that the arts get is uh, tremendously small, especially if you compare it with uh, defense budgets, for instance. Now, I know defense is necessary, but uh, when you consider billions and billions, I guess I heard a figure of more than $1,000 per citizen for defense and about 20 cents per citizen for arts or less. I think that's ludicrous. The principle that is involved here affects teachers, it affects educators, it affects scientists. Can, can the Smithsonian 
uh, carry on a show that talks about evolution, uh, which clearly will offend fundamentalist Christians. Uh, under, under the Helms Amendment, you can't have that. I would assume the nudity, um, the homosexuality that was portrayed would be controversial to some people, but if you look beyond that to what to the photographs and how well they were done, then all that becomes so unimportant. The way it's presented, no, I don't consider it pornographic. He uh, does compose using uh, f images which would be pornographic in other settings, I would say, but the way that they're presented, uh, it's just as a form that he's working with, as I interpret it. The quality of the photographs are really quite spectacular. The, um, the craftsmanship involved and um, the composition of the photographs were really quite striking. And then um, my mother and I also had a discussion at the end about the aspect of pornography and um, about the, the use of the children in those two images. And we had a little bit of, of differing views on that. Um, my thought was that the, the image of the little girl was not really pornographic. I mean, I asked my mother, does that mean that pictures she took of myself and my brother when we were children in the bathtub, you know, running around while laundry was being done, if that was considered pornographic? Um, I was a little, a little taken with the photograph of the boy because that seemed to be much more staged and that there was a lot more forethought to setting up the situation and saying, okay, we're gonna put the chair here next to the refrigerator and the boy is gonna pose naked. And I, I thought that was a little offensive. I didn't find it offensive, uh, maybe because I'm a mother and it didn't seem unnatural to me for the little boy to be in that funny position. I mean, I, I mean he wasn't doing anything to himself or to be provocative. There are a, about four pictures in there, in the, in the back room on the table, that shouldn't be there. I frankly think that someone, sh that, that really there is a question of judgment. And I don't think it added anything. I, th I, think, it, I think it detracted. If they want to put a, a thing outside of the exhibit saying this exhibit, just like on television, may have objectionable photographs in it, you may not want to take young children in it. If you're sensitive, you may not want to go into it. And warn people, fine. But, but to not show it is also limiting my ability to go see it. And m my morals may might not be the same as Jesse Helms, but who's saying that Jesse Helms' morals are the morals that are proper or right? But I, I don't think art like this is for everybody and uh, you know if you don't like it don't come. Um, I liked it I thought it was really worth going to see in a way I'm kind of happy that they had a controversy because it, I think a lot more people went out and, and saw something that they wouldn't normally have gone to. Of course I think that by the actions of the Congress it sort of polarized people into having forcing them to take a view on whether we feel that the Congress should be making aesthetic judgments or not. And I resent the government meddling in the arts. I think they have an, op an, op an obligation to support the arts. And I, but I think they're basically not artistic themselves and they ought to keep their hands out of it. Let, let artists decide what is art. I've, I've found in, in talking to many people about this that most people don't really care what the artists have to say. For, for some reason they don't care what these works are about. They don't care what Andre Serrano's work in which he uh, immersed a, a plastic crucifix in a jar of urine. They don't care what that's about. They care that he did it. And I think that if people would, you know, look at the work and really try to figure out what it was about, I mean, that's what artists want. You know, it's not just a photograph of something. You know, there's, there's many l levels in which these things have meaning. Artists and uh, cultural institutions can't be pressured by political concerns to just, you know, uh, censor ourselves. We're going we're gonna to continue to do this kind of work and continue to, you know, make statements that we want to make. And they, they have to do with, with life, you know, w with what it's about to be alive here.